This place was one of the greatest racetracks in the early 1960s. In those days, they just called it Danville, the site of so much sports car racing right on the North Carolina-Virginia border. It wasn't even funny. The first pro to win here was Carroll Shelby. Times got tough, the place went fallow. It actually began operating as a farm until they reopened this place as Virginia International Raceway. Since then, virtually every racing series in North America has been here, except for one, because it's brand new. This is Viper Cup. Here we are in beautiful Alton, Virginia, Virginia International Raceway, a pastoral setting. We're in the heart of tobacco country here, and this racetrack has been thrilling fans and drivers alike for nearly five decades. Twelve brand new Viper ACRXs make up the Viper Cup. Tom Natchew along with Rolf von Engelbrecht and Rolf, this is a brand new era for Dodge and for Viper. It's an amazing series. They've got 7,680 horsepower here set to take a standing start at VIR. Just about enough horsepower to move the grid backwards. Well, there are your starting drivers. Now, there was a technical anomaly in qualifying where the quickest two drivers actually went to the back of the grid. And you'll see them come up. You're going to want to keep your eyes on the cars of Ryan Shims. He'll come up next year starting nearly at the back. And then the number 90 car who will start at the true back and that car unfortunately went from second to the first row all the way back to the back. Keith Verge is in the number 90 car. Well, it's a standing start, and they're ready to go. When the lights go out, we're racing at Virginia International Raceway. This is the first ever Dodge Viper Cup, and we roll. Number 33 car of Ben Keating gets a good start, but so does the number 99 car from a standing start up over 100 miles an hour down into the braking zone. Look at Sean Bailey in that red rodent track car in behind him. One, two, three as they round that big 180 degree bend and now we're well and truly rolling. Ralph, everybody was worried about the standing start and whether these guys would actually get down to turn one. I think discretion was the better part of Valor here. They're all thinking about the fact that this is the first race. No need to go out and bend everything up in the first go around. But uh, definitely Courtney looked in his mirrors when he saw Keating coming up the inside there. Jeff Courtney, a professional driver from World Challenge on the Bob Woodhouse racing team, knows how to do the game. Second place, not such a bad place for him to watch what Keating does, certainly in the catbird seat. And he's got one wary eye on the very impressive Sean Bailey. Yeah, Courtney's having a little fun there. He's got to look forward and backward at the same time, but uh, definitely a good place to be when you're trying to learn the car, learn the track, and get this Viper sorted out. Through the signature bends here at Virginia International Raceway for the very first time, that is Ben Keating in that wild paint color, or paint colors as I should say, as he rounds the signature turn here at Virginia International Raceway, that is Oak Tree. And then Rolf onto the 4,000 foot straightaway, which everybody seems to love here at this track. Yeah, nothing like a little fun here. You open up the Viper flat out up the hills. This is an amazing feeling. So now over the cresting the hill, we're at over 160 miles an hour at this part of the track as we jump in with Jeff Courtney, obviously braking very, very key here. And he's conservative on his braking going over the top of the hill. Now this downhill right-hander, very, very tricky as he gets it set up for the left. Still a very rhythmic type of track. Cars still going about 85, 90 miles an hour in this section, Rolf. Yeah, it's a very hot day here, but certainly getting temperature into these Michelins is a little bit difficult. They've uh, got a lap or two to try and figure this all out and get the tires working properly. It's been a busy day. They've had two practice sessions and a qualifying session, and they've got a busy day tomorrow as well. After the first lap, there are your leaders, Keating, Courtney, Bailey, and then Ted Hughes, Jim Stout, and Keith Bridges. With so much racing going on in the world, 
you'd have to be a four-headed monster to keep up with it all. Luckily, we have that. Join Peter Keene, Bill Wood, Errol Tucker, and their guest driver analyst each week for an opinionated look at the news coming out of the racing world. Remember, it's GoRacingTV.com for all your racing and video needs. Back here at Virginia International Raceway, this is Dodge Viper Cup. Let's go back to the start while Von Engelbrechtin from the point of view of car number 67, Ryan Shims. Ryan Shims proved himself to be very quick in qualifying and practice all day long. And look at that unbelievable start. He's just moving people aside. He took a little extra real estate there going up the grass on the left, but uh, definitely a guy to watch in this race. I think the only circumstance in which a chief steward wouldn't frown on you using the grass to gain a position would be during a standing start. I can't think of another reason. Well, you're not supposed to go four wheels off and gain a position, but two wheels off with a, a little bit of a wider track area is uh, not a bad thing. I don't think the stewards are going to get on him for that. Look at the S's as we begin to build momentum here, and the number 33 car, that Ben Keating machine, seems to be very, very well suited here. Now, these are all identical cars. We talked about a technical anomaly. We're talking about a couple of millimeters in ride height. And you'd, you'd expect to see that as these teams just come up to speed with this brand new equipment. It's Dodge Viper ACRX based on the Dodge Viper ACR. We'll tell you more and more about the content of this vehicle just as we go through the show. But speaking of show, it's showtime for Ben Keating in the first ever Dodge Viper Cup. He's got his own way and actually starting to drive away a little bit from the professional Jeff Courtney. Jeff Courtney's doing a great job of conserving the car, at the same time looking in the mirrors and trying to chase down Keating. Keeping Keating honest is key here, but it's staying in second place is also what he's trying to do. In car with Jeff Courtney as we ride up the back straightaway and take a look as the ever-decreasing size of the 33 car that presents itself to Courtney. Working the back of the course, down by the old hog barn. Remember we said this racetrack actually went fallow for a little while and was an operating cattle farm and a hog farm as well and we're in the site of that hog barn right now. Then back up onto the front straightaway. Still a long straightaway but as we call straightaways with a bend in them, more or less straightaway. Speaking of in-car, we were in-car with you just a few weeks ago as uh, you drove the Viper Cup car for the very first time, Ralph. A rare invitation to drive a Dodge Viper ACRX. Thanks to Dodge and their incredible Viper and the new series, the Dodge Viper Cup, there is an incredible place to go and play. You want to do some racing? You want to show what you've got? against other people with 640 horsepower. This is the place to do it. This series could use somebody like me. I think it was important to be able to see what these guys are up against with their 640 horsepower, 8.4 liter V10 Dodge Viper ACRX's 605 foot-pounds of torque, enough to move large trees. These cars were incredible. We had cold Michelin tires on the day that I got to drive, but very, very impressed. Back on track at Virginia International Raceway, this is the battle for third involving Sean Bailey and right there the number 67 car of Ryan Shims. They're down on the front straightaway nearly 160 miles an hour and now things are starting to happen. Sean Bailey looks in his rearview mirror and says, you know what, I want no part of the battle for third. I'm here as a guest and lets these other two guys go. Shims is absolutely on fire going from nearly at the back of the pack now challenging for third place, Rolf. Ryan Shims is showing the pace that he showed earlier on today and he's got the bit between his teeth absolutely here. He can see cars in front and it's one of the nicest places to be when you're racing is knowing you're in a quick car, you're a quick guy on the track and you've got a guy in front that you can chase down. Three or four different places around the track you can see that Shims can look around the guy in front of him and absolutely see where the leaders are. So this is going to be fun to watch as they go bolting under the VIR bridge now going towards the signature oak tree turn. It's really starting to heat up as Shims can take a look down the inside, outside now. 
Yeah, a little bit of inside outside there by Shims. I think he was trying to decide which way to go by. He definitely had a head of steam. It looked like he was going to get by. Well, not quite around, Ralph, but he does have an opportunity to pick up a draft on this 4,000 foot straightaway. All three cars there dropping a wheel off, and the draft is on. Kicking up a little bit of dust on that corner. Oh, and there goes Ted Hughes on that same dirt that was just thrown up. So you never know what you're going to find when you get to the other side of Oak Tree. Let me show you what happened in qualifying, and Ryan Shims found a little bit of trouble in Oak Tree. Pancake the right side of that. Here's another angle. You know, he's trying to stay engaged there, but he hit the broad side of that car, was able to continue and set his fast lap time after that incident. Ryan Shims is really something special. This young guy is a lot of fun to watch race a, uh, race a car. The uh, crew chief doesn't mind when you bring it back with something that's buffable, but uh, definitely you don't want to put it off any harder than that at this track. Great paint job on that car as well, sort of a camouflage motif, as the Viper Cup guys have come to race and come to look good as well. There's your front five still in sight of each other, so this is by no means a runaway. We've got a great mix of drivers, we've got a car dealer, we've got a professional racer, and we've got a brand new kid in the scene, all of them making a big difference here in Dodge Viper Cup. You've got drivers here, once they put on the suit and the helmet, they're all racers, they all want to go hard, and Ryan Shims is proving that today. Of course, all of these events are sanctioned by Viper Days. The whole idea behind Viper Days when it started out was to get Dodge Viper owners off the street and onto the track. And then once you get onto the track, most people want to go a little bit further through driver education, Rolf, and then actually end up in something like the Viper Racing League, and every new Viper seems to be more suited for the track than the last. 640 horsepower, Ryan Shins goes down the inside. We have the in-car camera looking backwards now. He just absolutely goes blinding around the outside of that driver, and then, for good measure, kicks up a little bit more dust in his face. Sometimes you want to make sure that they're aware that you just drove by and a little bit of dirt in the face is a good thing. There's your leaders. We'll be back in a few moments. Hi there, I'm Tom Natchu, and this is Greg Kramer. We're called the old bastards of racing in many circles. You know, I guess we met back in the late 1980s. Easy, easy. It had to be at least that far back. Glory day of some racing, too. Oh, absolutely. Trans Am was a part of the picture. And actually, I learned to do pro announcing from this man around the Trans Am Championship. Oh, that is a long time ago. A very long time ago, but I'll tell you what, you take a look at Trans Am Racing in the early 90s in particular, the names that were running at that time. But the other side of the story was World Challenge was really starting to come alive at that point. And the names in that, there were sometimes you'd look at the two rosters and go, you know, I'm not sure which one is the most talent. Some amazing stuff from those decades past. And of course, a lot of those drivers also doubling up, running amateur racing in the runoffs. And it was spectacular stuff. Now, Go Racing TV has got all of that action. Trans Am World Challenge and even some runoff material all coming up over the next season. That's going to be something to watch. I know. To be able to relive those two decades of motorsports from the Sports Car Club of America's Pro Racing Department, Trans Am World Challenge, and then you include the National Amateur Championships, the runoff, the intense battles that unfolded there. It simply doesn't get any better than that, and it lives again right here on GoRacingTV.com. Because I need to spend more time in front of my computer. Welcome back to Virginia International Raceway in round number one of the Dodge Viper Cup. While we are away, Sean Bailey had a very big moment down in turn number one. Here it is. As you can see, he got a little bit squirrely under braking and then made the decision, Ralph, to drive the car off the track and try to catch it. Pretty game move there, but not quite successful. Tried to keep his boot in it, but didn't quite work. Ran out of real estate just about uh, five feet too soon. As you can see, the rear tires are still turning. He's been watching he's got his Dodge drivers on NASCAR, trying to gas it out of there. A very valiant effort. You know what? I think that's going to buff right out. It's a... <laughs> a little bit of steam coming off there as he hits the tire wall. No harm, no foul. Sean Bailey, hopefully, will get going again and get back into this thing. Now back on track with Corey Vetsuck. Now he's being hunted down by Jim Stout in the number one car. As he looks in the rearview mirror, he can see that purple car getting bigger and bigger. He's got a great run going through the S's, Rolf. 
Hard not to look in the mirrors through there. Those S's are a key element to getting some speed down the straight here, but uh, he's got a full mirror, that's for sure. The number one car at Jim Stout goes screaming down the inside, just absolutely parking that number zero one car of Corey Vetsuck. I don't know how he held on to it. I don't know if he caught the uh, wiggle that he had through the S's there, but boy, did he keep his boot in it all the way up there. Well, so now he's moved one position ahead, and he can still sort of see the leaders cresting the hill, I'm sure, as we see the number 52 car. This is our guest driver, and uh, he's rolling again, Rolf. He seems to be in pretty darn good shape considering what he just went through. And then as he gets rolling again, we catch up to him in real time where he's rolling just about to go into pit lane, Rolf. Yeah, he really needs to go to the pits to have the car checked out. The crew's going to want to see that everything's pointing the right way after clouding the tires as hard as he did. Now, there are no planned pit stops. There are no fuel stops. This is a 15-lap fight to the end. So for all intents and purposes, this driver is out of it. Sean Bailey's out of it, but he may want to go out and get some more laps in. I mean, who wouldn't? Meanwhile, consistent and doing a fantastic job at the point in the number 33 car of Ben Keating. It's hard to lead, Rolf, and I know you've led a lot of laps in your career. When you're out there all by yourself, you're, you just don't know exactly quite what to do. You're trying to keep the push on, you're trying to keep looking forward, you're trying to avoid the mirrors. It's hard to do any of those three things. You're looking at everything and you're very aware that you're being hunted down. Ben Keating, not for a moment, has forgotten the fact that Jeff Courtney, a veteran of the Sports Car Wars and World Challenge, certainly has a lot of experience in a Viper. And when a guy like Jeff Courtney's sitting back there, you're thinking to yourself, is he playing with the knee? Am I, am I the mouse and is he the cat? Jeff's a very cerebral guy. I had the pleasure of meeting him a couple of years ago in another series and uh, taught him the rain line actually at Mosport up in Canada. But uh, this guy knows how to race and he's just sitting they're watching right now. Meanwhile, Ryan Shims would like very much to get up alongside the number 99 car, but the 33 car, as we said, consistent lap times within a couple of tenths of a second as they round Oak Tree one more time. Now, Courtney, just a little bit closer, gets a little bit better run off the corner, and now in a position to draft almost the number 33 car of uh, Keating. And meanwhile, that 67 car continues to move up just little by little. It's a great show at the front here, at the end of the first ever Viper Cup race. Taking a look at these in-car shots, it's fantastic to be able to see the driver working the car, as well as his point of view from front and back. A little lower than his rear view mirror when we do look back from these cars. It gives you a sense of the closing speeds in these cars. A couple of different places are going 160 miles an hour on this track. And that's faster by a long run than any other spec series for sedans that's been around ever. Yeah, these guys are really racing and they're really racing fast cars. These cars have 640 horsepower and they're using every single one of them to climb those hills. We'll be back in just a moment. Club and amateur racer. Here at Go Racing TV, we salute you. And we want to give you all the tools and info to compete with the best. Find out how to do it all from your own garage by watching our club racer and autocrosser shows. GoRacingTV.com, supplying all your video racing needs. at Virginia International Raceway for round number one of the Dodge Viper Cup. It is a very, very warm day here in Virginia, and these drivers battling the temperatures. One of the things they use to lighten the Dodge Viper ACRX, I'm certain of this, is the air conditioning. On a day like today, Rolf, we could use it. Unfortunately, no air conditioning in these cars, and after 14 or 15 laps, you're gonna feel it. These guys are shedding pounds as they go, but Ben Keating, unbelievable job. Keeping the concentration up, staying in front, really hasn't put a wheel wrong all day. Somebody said this morning, as we were getting coffee in 80 to 85, degree heat first thing this morning that yesterday was a record it's never been so hot as it was yesterday and these drivers having to fight their way through it through the shaded oak tree and ben keating gets just a little bit sporty there on the exit tires are probably starting to go away he might have taken an extra look in the mirror at that moment there tom but he's definitely done a great job here these michelin pilot sport tires are a slick tire a very soft compound and really a tribute to the dodge viper cup that they're using them as we see the number 52 car of sean bailey he's decided that uh, he'll fight another day and park that thing before it does real damage to it 
Looks like he's had enough and maybe he wants to go back and think about what he did. Who knows, maybe he's just going back for a drink of water. Over the crest of this hill and now downhill towards Hog Barn. Keating, making this rhythm look actually fun as, uh, I don't know if his uh, tires are used up a little bit or if he's actually starting to flat track this thing. It looks like he's doing it on purpose. We had an opportunity to catch up with Ben Keating a little earlier today in the paddock. I own seven dealerships. Four of them are Dodge Chrysler Jeep stores. And uh, my wife bought me a weekend at the track in my O2 demo Viper. And that's what started all this for me. Uh, and uh, after becoming a, a racer of Vipers, I became a seller uh, of Vipers and uh, became good friends with Bernie Katz, who has BJ Motors. And, and we started doing a lot of business together. He ended up moving to Houston, and uh, we started ViperExchange.com. Uh, it's kind of housed out of Tomball Dodge, and uh, right now we have the largest Viper inventory in the nation. We've got uh, well over 100 cars. We converted the second story of the dealership that was made for accounting to a gigantic Viper showroom. It's really cool. Back with the leaders, and now the gap is opening just a little bit. Except maybe they're under braking for the 67 car, Rolf. Shims is all over Courtney, looking for ways around. It's uh, getting difficult. Hot tires, last laps, everybody's hanging on. So the number 33 car is the beneficiary of all of this fighting as he drives away slightly. But look at that, takes a, just a quick look down the inside. It's not going to be a very likely place to pass there. But now Jeff Courtney knows that Ryan Shims is there, knocking on the door, and he's interested in going through. You want to make your presence felt, and Shims is doing that. If you can keep taking looks, you can make Courtney take that double look in the mirror, and sometimes you travel just a little too far into the next turn. That's where the mistakes happen. As that fight uh, continues on, take a look at the number 33 machine actually getting airborne over the curves. He's absolutely aspired. Keating is not only leading, he's enjoying himself, Ralph. Unbelievable. Beautiful to see that Dodge Viper ACRX come up through those S's. One tire in the air. Unreal. Yeah, let's hope some still photographers got that. Now lap traffic is going to start to play into this by the looks of it before the end of the race. We're looking at the number 37 car of Eric Galern. Now Eric is an experienced Viper driver, but he told us earlier he hasn't been here before and he expected this before lap number 15. He's definitely going to want to be courteous, not want to become a part of this fight for first, second, and third, Ralph. First race, first race of the series, you want to keep clean and keep out of the way in a situation like this. Eric Galern and his wife Claudia, just a, a genuinely warm uh, couple from Texas, traveled a, f a decent uh, way to come here for the first ever Dodge Viper Cup. But these 12 drivers will have one thing in common. They can all say they were here on the very, very first day happens to be at Virginia International Raceway. I can't imagine a more beautiful venue to do this or a more challenging one, Ralph. Unreal track, lots of elevation changes, lots of twists and turns. These guys are definitely challenged driving these cars through here. Keating, leading Courtney. Courtney, looking back at his rear view mirror every once in a while at Ryan Shims and trying not to. Shims has fallen back just a little bit as he may have made a mistake. He might have worked his tires a little bit too hard trying to get right up on Courtney. You start gaining a lot of temperature when you're right on a guy. And it's amazing the dynamic range these tires can have if you abuse them. The way to do it is the way Keating is doing it right now. Smooth, but fast. He's not overworking those tires, nor is he actually asking them to do too, too much. He's not overbraking in the braking zones, and he's not cranking on the wheel hard. That is a picture-perfect drive as we see him come absolutely bombing through the S's one more time. Keating is leading this thing and doing it convincingly. Courtney's definitely doing a good job of catching up there too. He's gained a couple of car lengths on Keating right in these last laps. This critical braking zone into Oak Tree and then when do you put the power on? You want to get the power on early. Now Keating catches up to the number 37 machine and does it in exactly the right way. Late apex a little bit so that he could get around and now uh, Courtney running side by side on the straightaway. Shims may have to get this thing done in the corner and that would be unfortunate for both of them. That'll slow him down for sure. It'd be nice to get the pass done early. 
He got it done, though. Got it done in a very difficult spot as they head down to Hogbart and onto the front straightaway. Meanwhile, the 37 car of Eric Gallert, he's glad to be out of it. As the checkered flag flies, it's all over, and the very first Dodge Viper Cup race is in the books. Number 33, Ben Keating over the 99 of Jeff Courtney, and an inspired drive by the driver of car number 67, Ryan Shims. We're not soon forget this one, Rolf. Ryan Shims, unreal drive. That was the drive of the day, just to get up there from starting last. Fantastic run. And we're going to do it all again tomorrow for another episode of the Viper Cup. Meanwhile, as this one wraps up and the victory laps start to happen, let's uh, take you through the final results. Victory circle now as we roll up. A very happy and a very pleased Ben Keating. Well, Ben, we said at the outset that this would be a memorable one, and you put the cap on it. It doesn't get any better than this. It does not get any better than this. I can't put it into words. We call that verklempt in the business, Ralphie. A little bit overcome by emotion, and why not? Definitely put his effort in there, and the emotion is uh, coming in. We'll see you next time for round number two of Dodge Viper Cup.